Brad Bowen, owner of Muskie Country Outfitters, visits the Hayward, Wisconsin grave of Louis Spray and recites one of the most unique angling epitaphs ever carved in a block of marble. Here lies the remains of Louis Spray. Three record muskies in his day. Yep. And that is a real musky fisherman, folks. Louis. There's to us and those like us, buddy. Mm. Rest in peace and may the muskies never sleep. Mm. Louis did catch three record muskies and his reign as the Northwoods Muskie King spanned a decade and ended with a controversial 69 pound 11 ounce monster caught in 1949 and landed just three months after Illinois sports writer Cal Johnson moved to Hayward and set a new world record himself with a 67 and a half pound fish. Louis Spray's fish ignited a firestorm of controversy with both anglers trying to discredit the other. There were allegations of inaccurate weighing and fish not being caught in legal waters. Brad takes us to a local watering hole in Hayward to further explain the history. Yeah, so here we are. This is the Moccasin Bar in Hayward, Wisconsin, but this is Louis, This is the old Spray Cafe. This was Louis's bar back in the day when he was in, doing his Hayward days. So this is the biggest muskie left you know, in existence. It's not Louis's fish. Louis's record mount died in a fire in Rice Lake. Illinois sports writer Cal Johnson took this thing. Reportedly taken out of Le Couture in 1949, 67 and a half pounds, 60, 60 inches and a quarter. A lot of people think it's bullshit because if you look at the picture, that's a river fish. That doesn't have a bar on it. And those big clear lakes, almost all the fish come out with bars. And the taxidermist added bars to it and stuff. And so, um, but who's to say? I mean, you know, these these record, these old records have a lot of things behind them, and there's a lot of water under the bridge and shit. Hayward, Wisconsin is the self-proclaimed musky fishing capital of the world. Situated below the western end of Lake Superior in the Northwoods country of the Chippewa River, the town is rife with iconic musky imagery in all directions. There are musky murals and musky bars. And then there's the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame. Executive Director Emmett Brown gives us a tour. The uh, Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame, located on our seven acre site in Hayward, Wisconsin, was, was uh, formed uh, uh, in 1960 with, uh, with the erection of our building started in 1974 through 1982. We currently house over 100,000 sport fishing artifacts. We have 1,000 antique vintage motors on display. And of course, we are home to the largest muskie in the world, albeit uh, fiberglass and steel reinforced. The muskie or muskellunge, which is its proper name, is, is very, very important to the local economy, largely due to the, uh, the muskie's mystique and reputation. One of the changes that we see is the tremendous uh, increase in fly fishing for muskies. To play a, a large muskie on, on a fly rod, it's, it's quite a challenge uh, and, and there's quite a bit of skill involved in it. And of course, and let's not forget this, a lot of fun. We're after muskies on the fly in northern Wisconsin. And we've come to Boulder Lodge on Ghost Lake. Proprietor Karen Doby pours cameraman Mike Grisecci and Grizzly Hackle outfitter Drew Miller a welcome cup of joe. Boulder Lodge is the unofficial headquarters of Muskie Country Outfitters and offers muskie anglers from around the country very comfortable and wonderfully classic Northwoods accommodations with a rich angling theme. Brad takes us to his trailer slash fly fishing flop pad where we meet his two guides, Tim Fisher and Lucky Porter, tying one of their big signature musky flies. It's like a locker room, you know. I mean, this thing's like a focus piece of attack hardware, right? And the, the still kind of neat, the basic stuff, but then really last season we started messing with the articulation and it yeah, just brought the whole level of it. Yeah. We're going to roll and eat. They gotta get, we got to license up and then... We grab our gear and we're off. 
accompanied by Brad's wonderful and ever-present English setter, Penny. Calm day. Everything's lining up. It should just, you know, the anticipation is huge for us. That's part of it. I have a hard time like sleeping past four o'clock in the morning. You know, you get you get that adrenaline. But no fishing trip in this neck of the woods ever begins without stuffing yourself with a gazillion calorie breakfast. And believe me, you're gonna need it specialty of the Spider Lake Cafe, biscuits and gravy. And they are incredible. Welcome to the spectacular autumn splendor of Wisconsin's North Woods. In 1923, Northern States Power Company built a hydroelectric dam at the confluence of the east and west fork of the Chippewa River, flooding ten lake basins and creating the best musky fishing habitat in the world. Today, the Big Chip, as it is known, encompasses over 15,000 acres with 233 miles of near wilderness shoreline, 140 islands, and six major tributaries. Brad Bowen and the Muskie Tribe, as he fondly refers to his angling pals, have explored the area extensively and know better than anyone where record muskies can be found. On October 16, 2008, Brad caught and released a world record muskie on the fly measuring over 51 inches long. He has over the years become an expert in the art of catching them. It's a tough fish to fish and, and a lot of people, you know, don't come out and put the time in on the water and that's the key, you know. We sat around breakfast today and had a lot of discussion on the variables that we're dealing with, but bottom line is just get out here Get, get our fly in the water and keep it swimming. The only thing we can control is just being out here. You know, we can't control whether the fish are gonna become active or not, but uh, we can get out here and start the work. You know, it's a little bit like going to the salt mine. You just grab your ax and start swinging it. Muskies tend to strike right at the boat, and that is the pivotal moment. Brad gives Drew his first introduction. I look back on my catch records and about 75% of the fish that we get during the course of a year are within, you know, a rod length of the tip of the rod. So, you know, the, the real game is getting them to follow in and eat here within sight of the angler and the whole boat. And I like to make a big oval that brings the fly up near the surface at the outside of the turn and then come back in again deep. These neutrally buoyant flies with just tiny little moves will reposition themselves and set up different angles some little moves away like that and the rod the tip in the water and that that noise of the water friction isn't isn't not a problem it's actually kind of almost a an attracting type situation for him so now all drew has to do is cast and cast and cast nice Muskies have been called the fish of a thousand cast, and it quickly becomes evident to Drew that he'll be using every one of those. Remembering that all-important boatside technique is also crucial.
Drew settles into a rhythm. When suddenly, Lucky on the other boat with Tim gets a grab. Wow, there really are muskies in this lake. Good oh, it's musky. a good fish. It's a good musky. Good fish. Nice. Tiger. It's a big tiger. At first, Tim thinks Lucky's fish is a tiger muskie, which is a hybrid between a muskie and a pike. But its pointed tail fins rule that out. It's not a monster, but it's a gorgeous fish, complete with a menacing set of choppers. Just what we were looking for to get started. Well, a musky like that belongs up on the wall. Head in the kitchen and a tail down the hall. She wants to sell my musky. Sell his musky. She wants to sell my musky. Sell his musky. She wants to sell my musky boys, but yeah. that will never Wild on the fly!